His name was Dubs. I'm sure he had a first name, but we just called him Dubs. Except on those days when we felt overly affectionate toward him, and then we called him Mother Dubs. Dubs was the cook at our fraternity at Gettysburg College. He was a retired mess sergeant and ran his kitchen in much that order. If you talked to Dubs for any length of time, you found that he had a low opinion of those he had come to serve. He referred to us college students as piss clams, because in his estimation, all we did was sit around and piss and moan about our situations, about the college, about the world we lived in. He often would say that it's amazing with all the money your parents are putting into your education, with the wonderful education that you are getting here at this prestigious college, and all the opportunities that lie before you, you can't figure anything out. You just sit around and piss and moan. You would think that with all that, you could begin to address your situations and the world around you. And who knows, if you worked hard enough, you might be able to change the world. But you're nothing but a bunch of piss clowns. And you'll do nothing but sit around and piss and moan. Dubs was right. There was some great wisdom in his words. As I look around me today, I find that I am surrounded by a bunch of piss clams. Following the recent spike in COVID-19 across the country and in our own area, and politicians that are acting reactionarily, there's a whole lot of pissing and moaning. And not a whole lot of doing. It's real easy to blame Trump, to blame Wolf, to blame Fauci, to blame those idiots that refuse to wear masks, to blame parents, to blame churches, to blame beaches, to blame bars and restaurants. But that's not going to get anything done. Can we do better than being piss clamps? Or will that be our legacy of COVID-19? There's a marvelous parable that Jesus tells in the latter part of Matthew's Gospel. It's interesting in its placement because it follows the parable of the Last Judgment, where you might remember that those are rewarded for how they dealt with the least of their brothers and sisters in times of need. The parable goes like this. There was an owner of a business, a field, a vineyard, who came to three of his servants and gave them each talents, to the first five talents, to the second two talents, to the third one talent. And he said to use them in the management of his business. The first invested wisely and doubled his talents. So the one with five had ten. The one with two did likewise and now had four. The one who was given one talent simply dug a hole and buried it so that upon the master's return, he could give him back what he had given. No less, no more. When the master returned, he rewarded the first two, and the third, he took the talent away and gave it to the others. God has blessed us with many talents. But what are we going to do with it? Will we invest in the world around us? 
Will we invest in those, the least of these, our brothers and sisters that are in dire trouble in these days? Or will we just dig a hole and like good clams crawl in, pissing and moaning the whole way? You would think with the collective wisdom that I read on Facebook and other social media on a daily basis, you know, the wisdom that has all the answers to fix our problems, that we could do better than just sitting around pissing and moaning. We could get some things done. What if we sat down with business owners, particularly in those hard hit areas like restaurants and bars and nightclubs, and together began to dream of new ways for them to begin to operate? Perhaps some innovative techniques, some things they had not thought about, perhaps even investing in their work. What kind of a difference might we make? But what if we took that collective wisdom and ingenuity and came together as a community and said, let's look at our whole community. How can we work together in new ways so that no one is at risk? That we support one another in these times of need. Or individually, what can we do? What if we were to adopt a small business, a restaurant, a bar, a nightclub, or something else, and worked hard to support that as we could, whether it was with our business, or in encouraging others to take their business there. The possibilities are endless if we put our minds to it. If we use those God-given talents and invest them instead of burying them in that hole of piss. We have an opportunity, not a crisis, to revisit our world, to use all that we have been given, to begin to address the needs of those around us. And who knows? We may even change the world in the process. God has not only given us the talents, but the promise that through those talents, much fruit may be born for the sake of the world. The way I look at it, the ball's in our court. What will we do with the talents that we've been given? Are we ready for action? Or was Dubs right? We're nothing but a generation of piss clamps. Pissing and moaning our way into oblivion. I sure hope he was wrong. Let's prove it.